Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave the Cyber Guy. I'm here with Hal the Networking Guy. Once again, uh, we teach for Kapiolani Community College at the University of Hawaii system here on the beautiful island of Oahu, about nine-tenths of a mile away from the sands of Waikiki Beach and about 500 yards away from Diamond Head Crater, the one that's not exploding right now. That's the volcano we're talking about. The Hi, extinct Hal. one. Yeah, the extinct. Well, gosh, I hope it's extinct. <laughs> We keep, we keep finding out volcanoes really don't go extinct. They just kind of slow down to a murmur, and they can blow up at any time. Hopefully this is not a Mount St. Helens event. Hmm. But uh, I was watching um, just uh, yesterday, there was a video of the lava flows, and they were so powerful it tore a piece of rock off of the side of the lava flow and carried it downstream. This boulder was the size of about eight different trucks put together. Wow. And, you know, it's, it's pretty spectacular. Some of the lagoons that are getting inundated with... With, uh, with molten lava and all that steam comes up and uh, maybe our fans should know that, that the vapor contains uh, particulate glass. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to breathe it or get in your eyes. No, you don't want to be in the area. So if you're out uh, sightseeing and you think, I'm going to go see a volcano, you better stay away because if the wind shifts and you get blasted with that, that uh, fog, that smoke, uh, it's going to do permanent damage to your lungs and could blind you. So stay away. Uh, if they say stop, do so. Well, today is a good day. It just seems like, uh, you know, I'm sitting around the house thinking, yeah, what are we going to talk about on Friday? <laughs> and then the news just keeps writing itself. <laughs> we have this great political environment, so I guess comedians have their, their share of anything they want to uh, talk about. It's just a, it's a wonderful time for comedians. But it's the same for us cyber people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just seems to be uh, either through uh, zero days and ingenuity of hackers or just through laziness. People are getting hacked all the time. And this one that we're going to talk about is not one that most people expect. So let's talk about uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, our uh, White House spokesperson. And uh, like I was saying, I can't believe I miss George Stephanopoulos, but I miss those days. <laughs> I miss what he would say over and over again, what the president meant to say was, and <laughs> he'd have to make up for it. But uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders um, apparently got kicked out of a restaurant? Uh, yeah, I guess she was uh, asked to, to leave uh, by the restaurant management. They, uh, 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 it was apparently a reaction to the administration's, uh, the administration's policy on you know, separating uh, oh, children, children, children away, from yeah. from illegal immigrants, and um, so they asked her if she would leave. And from what I understand, it, it was it was a pretty it was cordial, calm yeah, and so, quiet. Uh, and she I, did leave. I read the story. Apparently, the manager took a vote in the back room, and, uh, and everyone voted her off the island, as it were. And uh, they came out and they said she had to leave. And uh, he even paid paid for their appetizers, and uh, so she wasn't billed for anything, but she had to leave, and. Uh, Funny, like the next day, uh, that Red Hen, the restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, their website was hacked. And uh, most people would think, oh, it's a Republican retribution. You know, Trump ordered, you know, that site to be hacked in retribution. But the reality was quite different. You want to go through that with us? Yeah, you, you would expect that, it, it, that those things were connected somehow and they were going to put some kind of political message on, on the site yeah. after they hacked it, but not the case at all. What, the what they did was they used it for an, it really an old, an old uh, type of a black hat trick, uh, which is a search engine uh, optimization. Uh, and this is using uh, the algorithms that Google and these other search engines use uh, against them to, to try to uh, artificially uh, elevate the status of of, of some sites. So right. the more people visit the site, the higher it will show up in the search results. Now, we got to go the way this works. In the HTML on the site, you can put hidden text in the same color as the background, mm -hmm. so no one can read it. That text can be uh, all the uh, keywords and also links to, in an iframe, uh, links to another site that they want to elevate in the search yeah. ranks in, in like Google or Yahoo. And, uh, and and that's that's the secret, right? So you really, unless you're really looking, uh, you can't tell. 
No. Yeah. To the ordinary user? They would have no What's idea. The yeah. They would just know something's wrong with the site. They're not seeing what they expect. Instead of seeing uh, the menu from Red Hand or whatever, they're, they're either seeing nothing or they're seeing something that, that doesn't seem to be the right, uh, the right content. Okay. And uh, so this was apparently used to, uh, to redirect people to an Australian uh, pharmaceutical site where they were selling Viagra and other uh, well, that's important. pharmaceutical Those items. Those are important products. And yeah. to elevate, uh, <laughs> to increase the hits you know, uh, on that site and, and therefore elevate it in, in the search uh, algorithm. So this was a little bit of business espionage. And yeah. we should also add that you know, sometimes the content of the site doesn't change at all. And it's, it's just the way it's always been. But those little iframes, those embedded links, are in the background bringing up content which you don't see on the screen because the content comes up in the font that's the same color as the background. And the only way to tell really is you look in the lower left hand corner of your browser and you can see all the redirection happening. It's saying a TLS connection is being made, um, waiting for this site, waiting for that site, redirecting to this site. Most browsers, Safari, Mozilla, um, Firefox, Opera, Chrome, they all do that. And that's a good way to watch. And sometimes you will not know that the site has been hacked. You know, there are extensions that you can download and install for your browser that will show you every one of those redirects, every ad, every, you know, click, every, uh, it, there's so many things going on in the background. You, you think you click on one site, you go to that one site, but that site can call, uh, you know, double click and a, and a thousand other uh, sites to, to to track you, or, or uh, you know, for a number of you know different reasons, uh, and and uh, there is there is a software that you can in install that will show you every one of those, and everyone I, I know has ever ever installed that has been amazed how how many different sites are actually involved uh, in the background when you just go to visit you know one site like CNN.com or something. There's all the pass through advertising, yeah, click aware stuff mm -hmm. that's going on, uh, ad aware from Google, tracking cookies, right. there's all kinds of stuff going on. And it on can in the slow you down. You don't even know. Uh, about. Yeah. I, I've, I've heard that uh, there's, there's plugins, and I've, I have not tested these yet, but uh, my friend Tom did. He tested a number of plugins they've been using in Europe, and he said his, uh, his pass-through rate now is much faster. He's about 50% faster because he's taking away a lot of the advertising clicks and the redirects going on in the background, and it's, it's actually accelerated his experience, which is kind of nice because mm -hmm. uh, things have been slowing down with the yeah. advertising revenue going up. Our experience on the internet goes down, uh, which I guess plays back into you want to buy more bandwidth from your provider to make up for it. <laughs> uh, to make up for all the advertising that's right, going on. Right, right. Yeah. So it's, this is like a steamroller that you can never get away from, uh, and especially with the, the price of internet nowadays in some places, like out here, our rates just went up again, mm -hmm. and uh, we just had a takeover by another major, major corporation. It just, uh, it, it all plays into uh, security in one way or another. Um, one thing that hackers do know, if they want to get into a website, that they will research the company and try to find out and assess the budget of the company and where they're putting their dollars. So Red Hen, obviously, not putting a lot of uh, time and effort and dollars or security no. into their website. And website is one of the, is, is a public-facing piece of technology that's vulnerable. And if you're not putting money into your website, you know you're probably not going to be putting into a CIO, a chief information officer, or a security officer. And you're probably not going to buy the, you know, the latest firewalls. You're not going to be providing user training to your employees on how to keep yourself secure. Yeah, most restaurants aren't going to focus on that. They're focused on their food, their menu. The, the, the website is just kind of an afterthought. And they right. probably outsource it to someone who just you know, builds up a quick website for them. And, yeah, uh, and gives it to them, and and and, and uh, once that website is built, you know, if, if no one is maintaining it and continually monitoring it, then you know it's likely to be vulnerable, you know, to to these type of attacks and maybe other types of attacks. Th this site was built on uh, WordPress, which uh, you got to keep up with WordPress has updates. Not yeah, had yeah. <laughs> a good track record. It's had you know a, a steady stream of uh, vulnerabilities, which are then patched, but you need to continually stay on top of it and maintain it and patch it, uh, otherwise you're going to be vulnerable. And, and so apparently this this wasn't you know this wasn't fully patched site, and so they were able to get in and and 
uh, embed this code that did the redirect to the Australian. So it's, like, I mean, when I'm going to do a website and someone says, uh, I'm going to use WordPress, which is a, a content uh, system that's uh, database driven, right? Mm -hmm. And it has templates. And it's easy, very easy to put up a site with WordPress um, for most people, especially web developers. But if I'm going to do that, I need to know that the host of that, the internet service provider that's hosting that site, is going to continuously uh, upgrade and update their, their WordPress engine, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I have a WordPress site for my website, and uh, I know I've, about every two months I get notification that they upgraded the WordPress. And I have to go through my whole site yeah. to make sure that nothing broke and none of my code is bad. Uh, but it's a, it's a continuous process. If you leave it alone, like you said, you're just asking for trouble. Yeah, you, can't, you cannot set up a website and walk away from it. That's a mistake that, that so many people make who don't, yeah. who, you know, who just don't know uh, any better. Uh, because sooner or later there's going to be vulnerabilities and then someone's going to come in and they're going to deface it or they're going to do you know, some kind of... Uh, oh, there's any number of things they could do with it. They could use you as a bot in an attack. Mm -hmm. They could use you as a proxy to commit another crime. They can do what they did this time, spam dexing is what they call it, right? When they elevate uh, other sites based on the hits on your site. Spam right? dexing, yeah. And if, if they conquer you know, 10,000 other sites through some kind of malicious activity, and those sites never know that those redirects are happening in the background, mm -hmm. then they have this botnet that they can plug into and increase their advertising rate, and then they can sell that to people. Hey, look how good we did for these people. We got them six slots up on the Google homepage, yeah. right? And that's, that's worth a lot of money to a lot of people. And Absolutely. we got to emphasize this is not just in the U.S., and it's not always that they hack through the web server. They can also hack through the other networking equipment that's attached behind the server somewhere, like a Wi-Fi router or some kind of other router. Now, the civilian encryption protocols we've been using, um, we did a whole show on the, the crack attack, the mm -hmm. key exchange attack, that has basically compromised all of the encryption protocols on all of our networking equipment right now because we haven't found a solution. Uh, thankfully, Microsoft did not follow the, the publications uh, from the IEEE to follow this protocol exactly. They changed it a little bit, so they did not fall victim to it in any great way. But Cisco and everybody else that did the rules, they followed the rules, they fell victim to it. But now we're getting Wi-Fi protected access three. The WPA3. It's about time. I mean, WPA2 has yeah. been around for so long that it's 15 due. years now, right? Yeah, so it's yeah. kind of due for an Yeah, it is due. And uh, and it was about that between the the last, uh, the WEP and WPA, yeah? Mm -hmm. we, we, we spent a long time on uh, the web encryption protocol, which, of course, hacked in the 90s. But we got to emphasize, though, for our people out there that there's a, there's a couple of different things you got to watch for. WPA3 will take away the key installation uh, attack vector. However, there's still multiple vectors available to hackers. That's just one of many. And uh, one of the things you got to realize, if I had a router right here and it had WPA3, but your tablet didn't, I can't use WPA3. Mm -hmm. I've got to go down to the lowest protocol available on the lowest device I have on my It needs to be available network. on both sides, on both ends, on both devices, both the access point and uh, the wireless device trying to connect to it. Right, right. And even if they do have that, uh, we got to emphasize: uh, don't get lazy and type in the password one two three four. Still make <laughs> yeah. it tough. Well, no, you still yeah. have all of the vulnerabilities, you know, of uh, of authentication and of you know uh, admin passwords and all those things are still are, are still a problem. WPA three is just going to maybe. It, Increase the the level of encryption a little and 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 uh, solve this this one crack attack issue, uh, but it's not gonna it's not gonna be a panacea that you can it can just do anything. Now I've got WPA three, so I don't have to worry about it. Right, that's, and that's what a lot of people think. Right, oh, cool, I'm I am secure, and there's yeah. no such thing. Right, you there's always it's a running game. Mm -hmm. We keep saying it, you're running away from the bear. Be faster than the guy <laughs> next to you. Right, uh, yeah. so lace up your Nikes, and then start running and just. Be faster than the other guy. Because as soon as you stop running, the bear starts to gain it. <laughs> and right. the other guy starts to get away from you. That's right. And then you're in a bad situation. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a little break. We're going to come right back uh, after we pay some bills. Until then, stay safe. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. 
Think Tech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on Think Tech. Aloha. Are you tired of sleepwalking through life? Are you dreaming of a healthier, wealthier, happier you? You're not alone, and that's why thousands of people tune in each week to watch R.B. Kelly on Out of the Comfort Zone, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Make a change, get the help you need, and stop sucking at life. Hey, Arby, we're about to go live. Oh. Hello, it's 1 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon, and I'm your host, R.B. Kelly. Welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone. All right, welcome back to the Cyber Underground for a second part. Uh, the show. I'm Dave the Cyber Guy. Here's Hal, the networking guy. Welcome back, brother. Thank Let's you. talk about a couple of things. We were just talking about um, WPA3 and router security, and just because you got WPA3 doesn't mean your problems are solved. Mm -hmm. There's a couple other things going on there. The first thing that we talked about is not every device is going to have the ability to upgrade to WPA3. If you have a modern router, you do what's called a firmware update, you probably get WPA3 uh, mm -hmm. as a drop down selection in your protocols. But um, it it's very well could be that manufacturers want you to buy newer equipment. And I can see, I can actually see this happening to Samsung devices and Android devices in general, because those updates for the Android kernel are vendor specific. Mm -hmm. And that's been notoriously slow. Google keeps right up on top of it. LG's okay, but Samsung is, they have such great phones. But their updates are just so slow. And I don't know if you own it. Don't tell me if you do. But uh, I, I can see you having to buy more equipment to keep up with the pace of what's going on. And I just wanted to issue some warnings out there uh, to people. First of all, don't buy a cheap piece of equipment thinking that, oh, it's got WPA3? Great, uh, it's only 50 bucks, I'll take that home. Don't buy it off a of Craigslist, sorry to say. Um, if it's been in somebody else's possession, there's a good chance that they've rewritten the firmware with a backdoor for them. So as soon as you hook it up to your network, somebody else can get into your network. And, and again, they can see everything that you got on your network, they can pivot to all the devices on your network, they can hack whatever they want, but they can use you for other attacks, which is the biggest problem, right? You don't wanna be part of the investigation when someone forensically finds your IP address mm -hmm. in somebody's logs and they come knocking at your door and most likely they take all of your computers to go through them and then you're stuck with no devices for a little while. I mean, eventually you get them back, but how long do they keep evidence? It could be a long time. So I don't even want to go there, while, yeah. right? Uh, the other thing is uh, passwords. Let's talk about passwords really quick because we didn't really get deep into that. We do pass phrases now. Yeah, the, the length of passwords just like, keeps increasing the, the, uh, the recommended length. Yeah. And, uh, what are we at, 14 characters or something? Uh, at, at least, yeah. It used to be six, it was eight, then 10, 12, now we're up to like 14 and 16. <laughs> uh, and, and that's because computing power you know, keep, keeps growing. So we, if you're running a password cracker, it, it's running faster and faster on, on newer hardware, so you, you need a longer password in order to, to, to make sure it takes long enough to discourage people from you know, trying to Longer than the other guy. Because <laughs> any, any password can be cracked given enough time. Right. So you want to make it so that they'd have to spend you know, months or years on your password before they, they would be able to eventually crack it. Yeah. So it's not really worthwhile. They can and now we're in the age of, of combined computing power in the cloud. Mm -hmm. You can put together uh, thousands of processors to work on a process because uh, big data is so popular. People want to do data mining and things. It takes a lot of processing power so they can hook up something like Hadoop on, on Amazon Web Services and put 10,000 cores on it for an hour and a half. And they pay, you know, $100 or $1,000, but then they can turn it off. It's, it's scalable, right? And they can do the same thing to your password. If they really want in, they could get the hash of your password, put into a, a cracker like uh, John the Ripper or something on Linux, yeah. and just put all the cores in the world on it, and they'd get it. They'd get it. So it's 
The longer it is, the better, and the more secure you are, yeah? The longer it is, the better. The more complex, the better. And complexity, uh, as, as it relates to passwords, means different types of characters. So lowercase, uh, alphabetic, uppercase alphabetic numbers, special characters. If you combine all of those, and then that, that's a complex password, and it makes it harder to crack because I can't just run through all of the you know, lowercase uh, letters and expect to get. I have to run through all of those different types of characters uh, in, in you know, so many combinations that it, it's going to make it take a lot longer for me to. And the blank space is valid. Right, so you can write in a uh, usually, sentence, yeah. a normal sentence, and yeah. use the space bar, and you're good, because that is an ASCII character. And that's space, not right? something people usually think of, so it's probably, it's probably a, a good thing to have in your, in your password, because it's probably not that common for people to even check for that yet. I, I would even recommend, and I, I say this to everybody else, uh, make it a passphrase, switch out some of the words for other languages. So a sure. common yeah. dictionary attack in a single language could take quite a while, but if you mix up the languages, now you have multiple languages to use in a dictionary attack. It could take three, four, five times as yeah, long. It's probably unlikely that, although there, there are um, definitely rainbow tables and password uh, word lists that are in different languages, it's probably uh, less likely that, that you'd have a combination of different languages within a single one. So it would make it a little. I saw a password just phrase. Just one more. So one of our Japanese students used some of the kanji characters mm -hmm. and uh, you know, did pictograms. And I thought, that's brilliant. I love it. And uh, when you use extended ASCII, smiley face, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the diamond from the deck of cards, you know, those are extended ASCII characters. Those are great. The only problem is, problem is that those can be difficult to type on certain devices. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it might be hard to get on your phone or on your tablet. True. If you're trying to log into a, to a site. So th those are great on your desktop or on your laptop system, but sometimes they can be problematic on, on some websites, oh, yeah. may, may not support them. Um, and again, they could be difficult to, to type on certain devices. Well, let's wrap this all up by, by talking about uh, another thing that people can do if they get onto your network and they, they, uh, they have access to your system um, or they get onto uh, just your, your smartphone, uh, they can do crypto jacking. Crypto jacking, yeah. So th this is really just another uh, type of malware attack uh, that's out there that's uh, relatively new. Uh, some of these criminal gangs that were doing like the ransomware to make money, They've uh, found that it's actually more lucrative to do this type of attack, this uh, crypto jacking. So what, what they do is they, they, they install uh, code or, or they install malware uh, on somebody's system, right? Somebody's got a vulnerable system. And uh, what it does is it mines cryptocurrency. Now we should discuss what mining cryptocurrency mm -hmm. actually means. So wanna go through that with us? Sure. So cryptocurrency, I mean, is, is is, it's just a digital um, thing, right? It, it doesn't actually it, it exist physically, and it's created by these mining algorithms. So they, they, they're doing these complex mathematical problems, uh, and the result of it is a small amount of cryptocurrency. So it's your reward uh, for verifying transactions yes. uh, of between other members that are using cryptocurrency. So if we do a, a transaction between us, multiple ledgers, they're, they're called uh, uh, ledgers that uh, keep track, they're everywhere. So they're, they're disengaged from a single server. And um, those all have to be verified and that takes computing processing power. Mm -hmm. So volunteers will volunteer their computing processing power to verify those transactions and update those logs with the transaction we just made. And after, I don't know, a million transactions that you verified, your reward is a Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever that you're mining. So that's the mining process. Now, it used to be that I could set up my own little box and have that running all the time. And I could mine a Bitcoin every couple of days. But that's when, back when Bitcoin was 36 cents a Bitcoin. Now it's spiked at 20 grand and it's back to around, what, 900 or 9,000 now? Um, that's okay. Uh, it's got some shift to it, but you can't do that. The processing power is not there anymore. And it's not really worth it uh, for someone to rent a whole bunch of space on Amazon Web Services to mine this stuff. 
uh, somebody just put a data center down here on the island of Oahu to specifically mine Bitcoin, and they put in somewhere close to $5 million, but they're going to make it all back in about a year and a half with Bitcoin. If Bitcoin stays yeah. valuable, <laughs> you're taking a risk. Assuming, <laughs> assuming that, that the, the value stays what right. now. Yeah. So I guess it's, it's easier for criminals to use somebody else's system so they don't have to pay for that processing power or the electricity, right? Yeah, and what, what they'll do is they'll set up a botnet. So they're not just using your system, they're using hundreds or thousands of systems right, to, to, to mine. And so that's what makes it worthwhile. And they find that this is more lucrative than, than the, the ransomware attacks, because with, with ransomware, maybe one in 100 people would actually pay the ransom. With this, every single uh, computer that I'm able to compromise pays back because right? every single one is running the, the mining algorithm for me, so I'm getting something back from And they're not actively looking to clean their system because they might not they be have aware no this idea. is happening. You would have no idea that, that this was going on. Your, your system would slow down, but you might just think, you know, oh, That's maybe, an older computer. maybe my network is slow, maybe yeah. it's my Maybe IP. I need to update Windows. Yeah, maybe it, Windows tends to slow down you know, at various times when it's doing things in the background anyway. So this is all in the background, and you know, you, you you might have no idea whatsoever that this is right. going on. Yeah, I, I know if you're a gamer, you'd know right away because you're always running benchmarking utilities to see where your processing core power and temperature and your bandwidth always is so you can keep up with games because you don't want to be that guy in the game that says, oh, my controller broke, that's why I lost. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so to avoid whining, they just keep track of it so they'd know. But somebody, a normal business user, teacher, bus driver, police officer, they might not know right away. They would probably have have no idea. Uh, the actually the, the surest way to detect this is network monitoring. Oh yeah. Monitoring the network, uh, and and you can see the connections when it connects back home, right? To to transfer yeah, the yeah. the product of of the mining process back. Uh, that that's the easiest way to. Uh, Detect it, and so for home users, you know, people usually don't have any uh, any way to monitor their the network. Yeah. On large enterprise networks, you usually have intrusion detection right. systems or some yeah. kind of monitoring system. So that that that's how you could look for this. But for home users, it's pretty tough. It, well, so for home users, we can we can protect ourselves by continuously keeping our systems up to date. The Just, latest patches and fixes and, and hot fixes from Microsoft, they do patch Tuesdays every, mm -hmm. every uh, Tuesday, uh, every Tuesday in a month, right? Uh, was it the second Tuesday or first Tuesday? It's patch I, Tuesday. I forget. Uh, but they come out with security updates. You should do these. Uh, Mac uh, continuously updates, but so does your phone. Mm -hmm. yeah, iPhone updates all the time. Android runs a little bit Android. behind. But they do update. They do update they do. every once in a while. You should do the updates. I know it's a pain in the butt, and you think you might something might break, but every time you update, you remove those flaws that might be used to compromise your system and install this stuff in the first place. You should also not download that software in the first place. Don't jailbreak your phone. Keep the security yeah. systems on there. Uh, go to Google Play. Go to the iOS App Store. Get the verified software. Um, buy real software. Don't get uh, stuff that's not off the shelf or sold by the vendor. Yeah. Any other recommendations? Uh, avoid uh, suspect websites. Oh, yeah. Avoid you know, shady websites because uh, this uh, mining code can actually just be a JavaScript that so you visit the site with an out-of-date browser, mm -hmm. and it activates on your computer. And it downloads the JavaScript, and it starts up the process, and, yeah. and, and there you are mining away, and you don't have any you idea. You have no idea. OK, everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, join us next week and uh, more great content here on the Cyber Underground. Thanks for joining us today. And until next week, stay safe.